Hello and welcome to a World of Tanks video with me in it. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the T95, uh, the T95 being the bearer of several names, one of them being the T95, the other being the 105mm gun carriage, the last one being the T28 super heavy tank. It does share a name with another tank on the same tech tree because it is basically the same tank. The T28 at tier 8 is 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 the, well it's the same it's the same really i mean in terms of balance they've made it different but it's the same if you look here you can see very clearly that the t95 has two sets of tracks the outer set on each side uh is removable if you remove them what you get left with you get left with the t28 now the reason it could do that uh, was for transport because otherwise the vehicle was too wide to be put on a train the reason it needed those was that without them it would just sink into the ground because it was a heavy lump of metal that needed just that little bit of extra width to spread the weight. Now the T95 uh, is a tier 9 turretless tank destroyer that does come after the T28 and before the T110E3 and it's a weird one, it's a really weird one in terms of gameplay but the reason that it's so well armoured and it's so well armed and yet cannot move is because it wasn't designed for this it wasn't designed for World of Tanks. Ah, it sounds weird. None of these tanks were designed for World of Tanks. But some tanks were sort of designed to fight other tanks, and that was the thing that was going to happen. No, this was designed solely for combat at the Siegfried line. Now, the Siegfried line is a heavily fortified uh, line. Uh, <laughs> lots of bunk. It was used since World War I, uh, and sort of over the years, it, it was abandoned. And then come World War II, they sort of rebuilt it um, with bunkers and pillboxes and whatnot. And they needed a vehicle that could break through that, that could just pound that into submission. And they thought, oh, well, we don't need it to move because it's going to be chasing buildings. We just need something that can take a pounding and, you know, blow stuff up. This was that tank. Um, so only two prototypes were made of uh, of this. There was there was an order made for, like, I think it was 25, and gradually that order got smaller and smaller and smaller, and then they got down to two prototypes. Um, but by the time the testing had finished, unfortunately, other tanks, other sort of more adaptable and more versatile tanks were available, like the T-29 and the T-32, making the T-95 pretty obsolete. Now, those two prototypes suffered suffered some, some interesting fates. Now, I say interesting, well, we'll see in a minute. Um, one of them, during testing, did, well, pulled a Sherman and set itself on fire. Well done. The other one apparently was broken down for scrap. So, out of the two prototypes, currently we have none left. And yet, in 1974, at Fort Belvoir, one T-95 was found on the firing range. Which, you know, raises a whole bunch of questions. And someone's note-keeping abilities are obviously a little bit questionable. But, there we go, there is one. I can't remember what museum it's at, but it's there. You can go look at it and go, oh yeah. And then, uh, you can tell passers-by, you'd be like, oh yeah, they took the tracks off and uh, it became a different tank. Well, it wasn't a different tank. It was the same tank, but it was smaller. And it would sink. Just crap. Don't don't tell them that. That's not a good fact. And with a little bit of historical context out of the way, let's uh, let's see how this performs in game. Here we are on Swamp for replay number one. And I don't really need to say much here because look how slow this vehicle is. Now this really does create some problems. Because you need to have committed to a flank. You need to know where you're going on each and every map way before you've got there. You are not a reactive vehicle. You're a proactive vehicle. You have to just decide where you're going to go and you have to start going. And the same is true of the T28, um, I think, even though that's just a little bit faster. But in this vehicle, in this lumbering behemoth, you have to know where you're going. And you only find out if that's a good or a bad idea shortly before or when you get there. Because up until then, there's nothing you can do. I couldn't now, for example, decide, oh, actually, maybe I need to be on that southern flank because it would take me most of the game to get there. As you can tell, by the way, at the moment, that our, uh, our flank on this side is actually very lightly defended. We've only got the grill, the object, the TVP, and myself, and the three that came before me there aren't actually completely covering this flank. The E75 behind me uh, appears to be AFK. Fortunately though, he does turn up later on. Sorry for the spoilers. Right, 
I'm going to pick up a defensive position. I'm not going to go too far out because getting caught too far out in this tank is a death sentence regardless of how good the armor is. And the armor is really good. Even on the sides, it's up like 150 or something. I mean, the back's not as good. But still, 150 on the sides, it's pretty good. Um, some massive tracks as well that can sponge a little bit of damage. But the two, the two sort of nipples on the top there, the two Commander Hatchy type things, are weak spots. Now, they used to be smaller, but they've been made bigger because this tank was even scarier before. I say scary. In certain, in certain ways, this tank is still scary. You don't want to see it on Himmelsdorf down the end of one of the roads because you're just not going to use that road. That road becomes gone because there's no way you're going to deal with it frontally unless you've got gold or you've got an incredibly accurate gun. Also, don't forget that this thing can return fire, and when it does, it hits hard. It hits sort of between six to eight hundred ish, I think. Might be getting those numbers wrong. Correct me if I am. Uh, big gun, basically. My point is, it's gonna hurt. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't take punishment quietly. So at the moment, I've got uh, an AMX and there's a T49 that no one there, and that they're interested and they're trying to dislodge me. I should have zoomed in for that shot. I know, I know someone's going to say that. I should have. I didn't. I believed. And that was all I needed. That T49 uh, will cause me some problems later. Or a different T49. I thought they only had the one. That's confusing. So I've got the bat shot on my case now. Again, I've got to be really careful. Because all it would take. All it would take is that bat shot getting around my side. And there is nothing. Nothing I can do. Shot from the AMX 30B there. Ricocheting. A shot at that distance on a vehicle like this is basically a wasted shot. Some of the armor at the front, I had a little look on uh, tanks.gg, I recommend having a look there um, to see weak spots and to learn them yourself and to find out exactly... Uh, that was a plug, I don't need to be plugging. Um, anyway, have a look at that little armor thing. At some angles, at the front, that mantlet can effectively be about 500 millimeters or above 500 millimeters of effective armor, which is insane. That's insane. I mean, there are other points which are not as thick, but still, the fact that it can get that high, that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. So at the moment, it's 2-1 to us, so we're doing okay. We're doing okay. I'm getting more and more angsty. Angsty? Antsy. Antsy. Worried. I'm getting worried uh, because I still feel very isolated on this flank. And the other team are really letting me live longer than I should be able to. I have 514 health. That's... Two shots from the Batshat, two shots from the AMX 5120, uh, two shots from the AMX 30, or any combination of one each, of one from either, uh, that would render me useless. But they've decided to leave me, and I guess that is the strength of the tank, that it is an imposing vehicle. It does put you off, just because it can answer back with so much firepower. For instance, if that Batshat did come round, there is a chance I could pop him. If the AMX 5120 came round with his 92 health, I could pop him. They've got the mobility over me, though. So, you know, it, it, it's a bit tricky. If they coordinated, they'd have me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, speed this up because I do nothing for the next two minutes because I make a journey from, uh, from G8 all the way over to about H3. Uh, no, H4, maybe. Which which is a relocation, and that's... I don't know what that shot was. That was horrendous. Um, which takes me, like, a good few minutes. So I'm just going to skip ahead to that. And we're back. So we made it all the way down here. I didn't, wasn't paying attention to the time there, but I'm sure that took a fair amount. There's an object 268 there. Who's not expecting the sneaky, sneaky T95 to have actually moved to the other side of the map. And he suffers for it. And that's basically all I do this game. I get a couple of good shots off. I get one shot where I decided that a hill needed to be penetrated. And my goodness, was it. And that's it. And I spent the rest of the game moving. So you can see how you can relocate in it. It just takes a long time. And the map needs to be the right kind of map. Um, right, well, let's have a look at the next one. And here we are on uh, Corellia. Corellia? No, Corellia Star Wars. Never mind. Right. We're going to position ourselves down one of those sort of high priority uh, corridors because that's where we excel, especially at long ranges. This replay, by the way, um, I ended up blocking well over 7,000 damage, which is quite impressive. This tank is tough. 
Bear in mind though that when that does happen, the other tanks are kind of peekabooing, but I've got all sorts of tier 10 shooting at me. Remember, this is only a tier 9 tank destroyer, and yet it can take a beating and it can answer back with, you know, pretty decent effect. Uh, I will, I will put a disclaimer out there uh, that I miss a huge amount of shots. Some of them are RNG, some of them are just because, uh, because bad, quite frankly. But, you know, we still managed to hold this flank much, much longer than we should be able to. If you look down there, that is a huge amount of red that is coming this way. And effectively, just on this flank, we've got an STI, <laughs> a T110E5, and me. That's it. Everyone else is elsewhere, which is, you know, fair enough. Even getting to this flank though, that's not a long distance on the map. That's still taking me like nearly two minutes. In fact, by the time I'm there, it probably will have taken me two minutes. Now, I'm going to stop now because they're starting to creep around. The last thing I want is shots into my side. Because even though it is the 150, that's not a tier 10. That's not a big deal. That really isn't a big deal. And we're looking at quite a few tier 10s. Just a case of watching that corner and hoping nothing comes round. Got some absolutely lovely stuff going on in chat there. I mean, our community. Oh, come on, guys. Says the Grill 15. Again, look at the awful shot there. Took a part shot. He's going to fire back. He loses a huge amount of health for it, though. And a ding. The first of many, 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 many to come. Uh, that said, I still do get penetrated quite a few times, um, and I'm still weirdly useful after I'm dead, and um, you'll see why a little bit later. A little bit too slow on that shot there. This is just this is just a shooting gallery. I mean, I could fast forward all of this, and I don't understand what happened there. Getting tracked, then getting dinged. I think what I might do, to be honest, I might just I might just I might just speed this up. In fact, that's what I'll do. Okay, I'm going to pop back in. Um, hey, just in time for me to miss. I think at this point now I'm a little bit worried. Only having 49 health is a little bit concerning. The amount of stuff they have thrown at me trying to break me. The amount of stuff that they've lost because they've tried to get round and get those shots in to take me down is huge. They full on lost two whole tanks and they've lost a lot of health just trying to blow up this one little angry pancake of a tank. And that's, you know, pretty good. I don't know where that shot went. That really annoyed me. That, in fact, that legitimately upsets me now. Where did that go? It was in the... Unless it went through the hole, in which case that's a whole level of bullshit that I don't want to be dealing with. But anyway. Um, my point being, a lot of people died. A lot of people died to try and just take this one vehicle out. Shot the ground. Didn't look like that was going to happen. A very unlucky shot there. And I do finally go down. However... However, that's not the end of the story, because our little friend over here uses me as cover. And that lower plate that's normally quite weak on the Agpanzer suddenly, suddenly becomes quite safe, because it's got a whole T95 in front of it. Arguably, if he'd have been there earlier, maybe that flank would have become even better. We do go on to win this one. Um, and it's a testament. Oh, that's some bullshit there. Forgot that happened. Conquer a gun carriage taken out two in one shot. Lots of people very upset there. <laughs> as, uh, as it might be, the STI deciding that that is a report worthy. Um, <laughs> oh, who am I to judge? And so now all the Agbanzer needs to do... Well, there we go. That's all he needs to do. Um, this game, This game ends up being a win. I mean, it started off pretty close. Uh, the fact that three tanks were able to hold off didn't count them but a lot a lot of red is pretty impressive the amount of damage that the the t95 soaked is huge that's a lot of downtime on guns 
that was completely fruitless. So that's that's a whole loading cycle, a fire, and a reload that has been pointless. All of that time, those tanks that shot did nothing of use. Uh, yeah, I was tracked. Yeah, I was blown up. But 7,000 damage? That's... That's stupid. That's ridiculous. I don't think I've blocked any more than that. I'm sure other people will have. Uh, if you have, why don't you pop your highest rated damage? Highest rated damage? Highest block damage down in the comments. And you can tell me how bad I am. Um, which would be lovely. That would be a nice bonding experience for everyone. So let's uh, let's have a quick little look at one. I'm not going to show you a full replay. But I am going to show you something that upsets me. If that last video, or that last clip, was a testament to the strength of the T95, this clip really, really showcases the weaknesses. Um, and it's important to know that, because I was really excited about this tank. I still like this tank. I do find it frustrating, um, mostly because reacting defensively and, and relocating, yeah, it does work in some situations. We saw that on Swamp, but that was only in a case where we were winning so hard, I probably could have done whatever. I could have just driven into the middle of the map and just spun around in circles doing whatever I wanted, taking random shots, that would have been great. It wouldn't have made a difference. But in this game, things go south. If you look in the bottom right-hand corner of the map there, on the road up to the hill, RT-10 is absolutely boned. He is completely overwhelmed, and no one is reacting. Actually, that's not fair. The VK-4502 b does go up there and puts up a valiant defense. At this point, though, I've committed to my line. I'm going to get a shot off while I'm here. There's no way I'm going to turn around. This shot, I'm quite proud of this shot, though. Out of all the ones I miss. Look at that. Ooh. Quite pleased with that one. Um, that makes up for all the hill shots, right? Right? Am I good now? Please don't answer that. Right. So, it's at this point that I think, oh, I'm going to have to turn around. I don't want to, but I'm going to have to. I've mentioned that, you know, you don't really want to be doing this at this point if any tank comes down there my rear is in full view that that could be misconstrued the rear of my tank is in full view i'm moving back to try and support the vk now the vk is going to be out of my sightline when i get there he's got a t54 behind him i think oh if i get a high damage roll maybe i can put him off now the reason i go extra aggressive is that i know there are all those lights that are probably going to go back onto that cap zone and someone needs to be there to stop them. And no one, no one else is reacting. Everyone, I think the general consensus, no one said it, I'm guessing, is that everyone wants to get onto their cap and just outcap them. But it's not going to happen. They're already losing, like, so many people. Look at all that red that just came up on the side. We're, we're not doing well. We're 6-7. to seven. It's not the worst, but it's about to get worse. Here we go. This is the problem. So I moved to be defensive. That's it. I overcommitted. I gave my reasons for overcommitting, um, and I think they were valid reasons, and I think I did need the support, and I've not got it, and look at this, look at this, they know exactly what they're doing, they know exactly where to be, there's not a lot I can do, I'm trying to sort of ram them with my, with my rear, it's not happening, and this is, it's one of those moments where you think, why did I play this tank, why did I do it, why did I do that to myself? But then on the other side, on the other hand, you do get those moments where you just tank everything and you take 7,000 damage and you just... It's a bit of a love-hate tank. I love some moments and I absolutely hate other moments in it. If, if you liked it, give us a like. Um, if you want to see some more, I mash the subscribe button. Cheers for watching and um, I'll see you next time.